Hey everybody, it's your favorite love guru, Greg, coming to you with the Art of Relationships and going to be talking about one of my favorite topics about pleasing women, okay? Women, you deserve pleasure. And if you don't own your own pleasure, I want to help you own your own sexual, intimate, mental, soulful pleasure with your partner, okay? And we're going to be talking about this right after this so don't go anywhere with art of relationship show coming up next hey welcome back to the art of relationship show people Woohoo! We're going to be talking about women and you deserve pleasure. Absolutely, right? I'm all about women being pleased sexually, emotionally, all about that. And I try to do my part to help the guys out there or maybe even, uh, you know, same-sex partners with women about helping each other become more pleased, more sexually aware, more sexually confident, you know, in the bedroom, maybe outside the bedroom, that type of situation and what, you know, works best for you. And I've done many shows over the years on this topic, of course, about, you know, sexual pleasure. And the big thing about desire is about, you know, being sexually fulfilled, being sexually fulfilled kicks up more desire, but is it more about the physical aspect? And I talk about this and I gave, you know, great reviews on the principles of pleasure on Netflix in one of uh, Emily Nagowski that came out, maybe she should give me plugs, right? <laughs> and Come As You Are, she wrote that book. She's uh, a PhD, not a counselor or therapist, but she's a sex researcher and sex educator, um, went through Kinsey Institute and all that. She's very, very knowledgeable. Uh, she was one of the narrators of the show and it's great. And I've been talking about this stuff for a long, long time, right? And I still get uh, women in here complaining about their partners. Okay. We'll blame us men, right? I will we'll take the hit, right? About so many men are unwilling to meet their needs sexually to please them, right? That it might be all oh, just, you know, then I lick, lick, stick it in and that's it. Right. I'm like, what? No. Um, but there's a lot of men out there that want to please their ladies. I'm going to be honest with you. I, can attest to that. I have a lot of male clients in couples that their man wants to please their woman, but for whatever reason, ladies, you're not allowing them to, or you know what? Maybe they're just not getting you and understanding what you mean by sensuality, about pleasing your mind, your emotional state, along with your physical pleasures, okay? There's so many women out there, right? And I'm not bashing. I want you to own your sexuality. I don't want you to run from it. I don't want you to hide from it, be embarrassed by it. No, hell no. I want you to be able to own it and look at what's it take for you to be sexually pleased. And if you don't know that answer, you can find out, right? How many women out there still sort of refrain or embarrassed or maybe afraid or feel that it's taboo about sexual, you know, self-fulfillment, right? I'm all about, you know, you being able to explore your own body and that way you can teach your partner, right? How do you want to be pleased? Or maybe, ooh, what? Let them watch so they can use. And a lot of women out there, oh my God, oh my God, I can't. Because of, sadly, because of body images, right? Every body size, shape, and whatever you want to call it, with you ladies, you have a right to be pleased, okay? I want you to own that. I don't want you, well, I don't deserve to be pleased because I'm this, because I'm that, because, you know, whatever, right? I got one boob that's, you know, a different size than the other boob. Well, I hate to tell you, ladies, most women are like that, just like, you know, with our testicles and men, right? We are going to have one that's maybe smaller than the other, that type of thing, right? So you look at these situations about, What's it take for you to even, number one, go after and say, you deserve, speak, look in the mirror, right? Tell yourself, I don't want you to BS yourself, but to be able to tell yourself and express to yourself that you deserve pleasure. I deserve 
pleasure. I deserve sexual fulfillment. And it's not just about pleasing your partner, right? The old age old, if you will, you know, scenario that, you know, women are supposed to please their man. You know what? <laughs> Forget about that. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> Let me back up a, a little bit. It's not only about you pleasing your partner, but it's about you pleasing yourself and allowing your partner to please yourself. And I've said this on many shows for many years, okay, uh, with couples in my office. And I said, if your partner is not willing or willing to or worried about your sexual pleasure, my question is, why are you with that person? Ladies, don't do that to yourself, that you deserve to be pleased. And if you're with somebody that doesn't want to learn, doesn't, you know, maybe get it, or doesn't care about your sexual pleasure, it's all about him. My question is, why are you with them? Let's be honest, okay? And you can join in the chat down below on all face, you know, on all fast facets, sorry. Um, on YouTube, on Facebook, <clears throat> you know, all over the place. And the audio version will be available as well. Um, after this, I have to upload it on every audio platform, you know, iTunes, iHeart, you name it, Spotify, all those, okay? But I want you to be able to look at where are you at with self-pleasuring? Where are you at about exploring your own pleasure and, you know, what gets you in the mood? And there's a lot of aspects. And they talked about this on, you know, the principles of pleasure. And there's also, um, I can't remember, Gwyneth Paltrow did a, a show, which was awesome as well, about sexuality. Uh, both shows did a great, great job. And I'm highly critical because I don't want BS out there. I don't want people out there... Um, mislabeling stuff. I don't want people leading others on, oh, you do this and everything will be fine. And they don't know what they're talking about. It can cause more problems. It can even be dangerous and harmful for women's, you know, vulva areas and to be able to look at that. And a lot of men out there look at, oh, she was wet, so she must have enjoyed it. You know what? It's like saying, oh, a guy is hard. He must be excited. How many women believe that, right? Oh, a guy's hard, erect, right? So he must be excited and aroused, want to have sex. It is a physical expression, if you will, okay? It's a physical, physiological body reaction to sex stimuli, period. That doesn't mean it's pleasurable, ladies. And you might have known, yeah, you might have been what, whatever. That doesn't mean the sex is enjoyable or fulfilling or even pleasurable. So there's a lot of myths out there. And I've talked about this for, oh my God, for many, many, many years. Okay. And for whatever reason, there's a lot of people that are not even, maybe they're not listening. They don't want to learn or they're ignoring that because it cuts across their own egos. Okay. Let's be real and let's be honest. And a lot of men out there, you know, they might assume, oh, she's wet. So she must have enjoyed it. And it is, uh, you know, not a correct thing, not by a long shot, right? So number one, ladies, are you able to look at what's it take to please you, okay? Number one, what turns you on emotionally, mentally, right? Do you need, do you like compliments? Do you like affirmations? Do you want to be told you're gorgeous, you're sexy, or do you want to, be told, does it turn you on when your partner tells you, oh, I love how you, you know, deal with the kids. I love how you cook dinner. I love how you uh, handled work, man. You're a badass at work. Does that turn you on, right? I want you to know what turns you on um, mentally. Not only what turns you on, woohoo, it's important, right? But I want you to also look at what turns you off mentally, emotionally, you know, maybe you're overwhelmed, you're stressed, right? And we all, you know, well, maybe we all don't know, but sex, you know, fulfilling, satisfying sex can be a stress reducer, right? Kicks up the oxytocin, right? The dopamine levels, the endorphins, the body's natural painkillers, right? It, it releases those. So it can make you feel good. It can make you feel great. So I also want you to be able to look at, um, you know, what, turns you off, right? 
Was it remembering a comment your partner made to you a week ago, a month ago? Was it something that, you know, derogatory, critical? Maybe they were rude. They were disrespectful. Maybe your partner had an affair, right? Cheated on you. And we know that can be very devastating. And the partner's like, oh, how come, you know, you're not in the mood or you feel like you can't have an orgasm anymore? Well, duh, right? Because you're in your head. They need to understand what's it take to bring that safety back and what's it take for your partner to make you feel safe again, to trust you, to be able to open up that you enjoy your sexuality, okay? And also, what's it going to take for you to feel safe and confident in your own body to be able, well, let's face it, in your own body, but also in your own mind and in your own uh, emotional state that you can enjoy sex, Woohoo! plain and simple, right? So I talk about a lot of facets of relating to relationship in my, my theory, my, if you want to say my avenue and helping couples and couples therapy about uh, the mind, body, heart, and soul approach. And I do that with sexuality as well, of course, the mind, body, heart, and soul. And I already talked about the mental aspect, right? What turns you on during sex? Is it candles? Is it more romance? Is it that you can be, have a tickle fight and be playful and joke around or have a water balloon fight or have fun? Does that turn you on? Uh, maybe going dancing, dancing in the living room, maybe just a dinner, maybe certain music, maybe watching a romantic movie or exciting movie turns you on. Maybe porn turns you on. Whatever it is, are you able to own that, not be ashamed about it because, oh, a woman is not supposed to do that or like that. I want you to get away from it. And I'm not about double standards, about men are okay to do this and women are not. Oh, hell no, right? I'm about equality and I'm all about people promoting that as well. So yes, women, you deserve to be pleasured, but you need to be able to teach your partner what it is that works for you. Don't be embarrassed. You know what? And I know it's what, 2022, and it's been going on forever, right? That women were only supposed to please men. Like I told, get rid of that. You deserve to be pleased, right? And you also be able to look at, you know, was it that you feel like you're damaged or you're no good anymore because trauma, right? Rape, sexual abuse, physical abuse, you know, emotional abuse, all these aspects, oppression, we can talk about these aspects, right, you know, all day long, right? Probably for years, we can talk about these aspects. And I want to know what it would take that, you know, that maybe those traumas, the rape, the sexual abuse, it sounds easy, but it's not. But to realize that sex wasn't the enemy, it was the person, the a-hole that did that to you before. That sex isn't the enemy, they just use sex to hold that power over you and traumatize you, right? Again, it sounds easy here, but in our heart, in our soul, and in our mind, it's not that easy. And I get you, women, get you more than you realize. So it's about owning your own sexuality and owning about the right to be pleased to, that you deserve to be that, okay? So I want you to be able to look at, you know, number one, what's it take for you to be turned on? What do you, what really gets you wild, right? And because women have an orgasm doesn't necessarily mean that they were sexually pleased, right? Like I said, a guy can reach orgasm. A woman can reach orgasm. It's a physical response to stimuli. That's it, right? Being touched, being whatever. And some people can mentally, without even touch it, sit back mentally and have an orgasm, right? <laughs> It, it's like, you know, but does that mean you're sexually satisfied? You're sexually fulfilled? So, you know, where are you at in self-exploration? What do you do to get rid of the, I don't know what you want to say, the myths about sex or a sexual act is gross. It's disgusting. It's all this. And you all have a right to have your boundaries, right? So number one, is your partner making you feel safe, right? Do they want to know what pleases you? And are they willing to please you? 
You get me? Are they willing to learn and act upon that? Or is it just lip service to be able to go after it? Okay. Do you like your body touched a certain way? Do you like more pressure? Do you want less pressure? What about the speed, right? Do you want it more slow, more sensual? Ooh, baby, right? Or do you want it more speedy and firmer, right? Do you want your neck sort of touched? Do you want whispers in your ear about your sexy, that you're their sex goddess, that you are loved, that you're adored, that you're cherished, right? The way you want to be tasted or touched. You get me? That, oh, they love the way you taste. Ooh. Well, that gets you hot. What goes, um, are, or does this sort of like, ew, that you're like, oh, Greg, I can't do that. I can't ever say that. I can't even say I like that because I'm embarrassed. I want to know why you're embarrassed, right? Is it because you were taught to be embarrassed about sex, that sex is wrong, that it's bad, that it's, you know, only bad girls do it. Well, good girls have a right to be pleased too, right? <laughs> so look at these avenues and where did you learn about sex? Was it like me, right? Mostly friends and I'm not saying it's right, not at all. Did you learn it from your parents, your mother? Did you learn it from religion? Oh boy. Did you learn it from your culture, from society? Did you learn it from looking at maybe adult magazines, ladies? Did you learn about it from movies? Did you learn about it that it was just man-specific porn? Yeah, I'm all about being pleased, absolutely. But I want to please my partner too. And how can I please my partner if my partner has no idea how she wants to be pleased, right? And I look at that, that she maybe doesn't care about herself enough or is embarrassed or maybe it's just not important to her, which is sad, right? So I want you to be able to look at these formats and look at, you know, what it is, where your, you know, embarrassment comes from, right? Where did you learn it from? Uh, was sex taboo to you? Who taught you about sex? Now, did they teach you what they thought about sex or their view about sex? But tell me, why would their view work for you? Maybe it will. Absolutely. But my question is, why would somebody else's view on sex work for you? It might. Or maybe their sexual rules, their sexual boundaries, the do's, the don'ts, what sex represents to whoever taught you about sex. Maybe it works for them. But who's to say it's going to work for you? You get to decide that, not me, right? Uh, you know, being a relationship and sex uh, therapist specialist, right? I don't decide that. You do. And I help couples to become more, and individuals actually, to become more comfortable in their own sexuality and what that represents to them. I'm no different. I want that same for you. And there's no other professional in the field, counselor, therapist, whatever you want to call, or anybody that needs to dictate how sex is to you, right? And it's sort of ironic that a couple years ago on women's health, okay, on women's health, on the congressional level, yeah, U.S. congressional level, on the committee on women's health, right? Guess what? There was not one woman on that committee. They were all white men. Absolutely. How wrong is that? That's so messed up. So even today, it almost seems like sex might be taboo or women's sexuality is owned or dictated by men. Oh, hell no. We need to be able to break that and to be able to say, hey, women, yeah, you need to own your sexuality. Most men want that. Most men want women to teach us your ways, you know, teach me, teach me the way to please you. I want you fulfilled. Do you think that makes us feel good as your partner? Oh, hell yeah. It makes us feel good. Let's be honest. It props our ego up um, that we can please you fulfilled, satisfied, that we can, you know, definitely, you know, make your toes curl. Yeah. It might pick up our ego just like it does for you. However, most men want you happy. Most men want their female partner, their partners happy, right? I do. I want 
you know, women to be so fulfilled and to be, but we need help, ladies. I want you to be able to help your partner and talk about what you need, what you want. And don't be ashamed or embarrassed about that. We need to break those taboos that are still out there. They've been out there for, you know, since the beginning of time, right? We need to get rid of those. And it's a lot better than it ever has been, okay? That still does not mean there's much improvement needed, okay? We need to get rid of the patriarchal view of men own sex, right? Oh, hell no, right? I want women to be able to own their sexuality and go after it from a, a mental state, from a physical state, you know, a soulful state. What is sex to you? What does it represent? Uh, does it represent just about, you know, pleasing your partner, not about you? Does it mean it's dirty? Does it mean it's something you have to do? It's out of obligation. That's a huge turnoff, right? For you, that would be a huge turnoff for me. Oh, I'm just doing... I'm just having sex with you, Greg, because I'm obligated. Ugh. You know what? No, no, thank you. <laughs> I'll take care of myself, right? So I want you to be able to, you know, not about that because you want sex. You want that um, connection. You want the physical pleasure. You want it all, right? And believe it or not, most men, not all, but most men want the same things. It's just about talking about it and getting rid of the stigma or shyness, if you will, or embarrassment about talking about your sexual pleasure. So look at it again. What do you like mentally, emotionally, right? And what do you want physically? What really drives you wild, right? Most men might think, you know, whatever. For, oh, if I do this, oh, she's going to love it, right? that um, she's going to love it because I watched this on porn or my my former girlfriend or ex-wife used to love it. That doesn't mean your current partner is going to love it. That goes for you ladies too, right? That doesn't mean your man's going to love it. Um, so you need to teach each other. You need to learn from each other. You get so many people that I've had couples in here where the woman was not sexually pleased for 20 years, but she didn't tell her partner, her husband. I was sad. I was sad for him. I was sad for her. I was sad for both of them because I'm like, how come you didn't teach him? And then she starts going off and yelling at me. Um, like I'm blaming her. No, I'm not blaming. I want to know. I get it. It might not be easy. It might be embarrassing. I want to know don't do that to yourself. You deserve to be pleased. You deserve to have sexual fulfillment, ladies. Go after it, right? Own that. Own your womanhood and own your equality that you deserve pleasure. So go after it, you know, again, the mental aspect, the emotional aspects about what really turns you on, what gets you hot, what gets you bothered. Ooh, baby. And don't shy away from it. Go after it. And also physically. And we all know we're in different moods, right? Men are in different moods. Women are in different moods, right? So we might be in the mood for, man, I just want you to nail me up against the wall, Greg, and do me hard, right? And another time you might want more sensual, more foreplay, more sensual kissing, exploring, may, maybe more holding each other before you actually start having sex. Maybe you want more, you know what? affirmations, loving comments, you know, the loving words of expression you want. And other times you want the dirty talk, right? Yeah, I want to lick you. I want to do you. I want to spank you, right? We're all in different moods, right? But it takes communication. It takes communication and about trying to read each other and understanding each other's moods and understanding that. And the best way to do that is to teach, to verbalize. We can also guide our partner's hands, right? Or maybe mouth, grab our ears. No, <laughs> that might work, right? But there might, there's so many different ways that we can express and teach our partners, right? So don't be embarrassed about it. Like I said, if your partner does not want to learn, they don't want to care about their sexuality, that's on them. That doesn't mean you have to live a life where you have to put up with it. Okay. And that might be scary for a lot of people because I might have to be alone. I might have to, you know, oh, I'll, you know, I might be alone if I don't put up with it 
or if I do put up with it, I'm going to be miserable. And we all know, and depression can sink in because you're living a life that you really don't want to live. And I always talk about, it's not about perfect, but you're living a life dictated by somebody else. Remember ladies, how was your life dictated by you since the beginning of time, right? That you weren't supposed to, it was bad for women to enjoy sex. What? Are you kidding me? That it was all about pleasing your partner, not about you. Something that you're supposed to do, that you're obligated to do, right? That is so wrong, so wrong, and such a huge myth and oppressive state to be in. We need to get away from that. We need to keep improving and women, you need to be able to help us and you need to be able to help yourself and own your sexuality and be about you being pleased and being sexually fulfilled on all those levels, right? The mind, body, heart, and soul and what those mean. So even write them down, think about them, you know, huh, how do I get turned on, right? Hmm, man, I know it turns me off big time, but I want to know what also turns me on, right? How do I know I'm fully sexually fulfilled? Does it mean I have one orgasm, two orgasms? Is the intensity of orgasms? Does that mean, let's face it, can you be sexually pleased and sexually fulfilled without having any orgasms? Some people can be, absolutely, right? Again, it's not a right or wrong. It's an individual attitude. It's an individual means for you to allow your sexual pleasures. Hey, Trayvon, I appreciate you uh, tuning in. So it's up to you. It's an individual choice. And think about that. How empowering is that to know that you don't have to be like everybody else, ladies. It's about you, your own sexuality, and about your pleasure. It doesn't have to compare to anybody else's. You own that. Sex is a very, very individualistic thing. Okay, it's a very individualistic attitude, mental state, physical state, right? Very individualistic. You don't have to compare it to anybody else, but you own what you do. So go after it. Be proud of your sexuality and start learning what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Okay, and yeah, we know about compatibility. It is important, right? But how are you going to know if you don't learn yourself, right? So women. Please help us be better lovers to you on all levels, okay? Again, check out the Art of Relationship show every Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern time on YouTube, on Facebook. You might be watching it on one of those uh, platforms now. Um, under Love Guru Greg, you can find me all over the place on social media. Look me up, Love Guru Greg. The Art of Relationships.org is my website as well. So, Peace and love to out you and believe me, ladies, you deserve to be pleasured big time sexually and fulfilled. Take care. Bye-bye.